Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we're going to be looking at the curved honeycomb vase uploaded by Eggnot. First things first, we're going to go down to the developer notes, see if they have any specifications. And there's not too much here, but they do say that they have four different STLs. They have the spiral vase, which is the first one. That's basically a solid object. In order to print this one, you will need some sort of uh, shelling command that can basically make this into a vase. The second STL is going to be a thick one millimeter, so a thickness of one millimeter vase. The other one will be a two millimeter thickness. And finally, there's a blender, which is kind of a mixture of the thin and thick. So once you're happy with all that and you are read all that stuff, go to download all files up here, click on that, and you're going to get a folder similar to this. And here are all the STLs we talked about. Now, for beginners, I recommend you stick with either the one millimeter or two millimeter STL. If you want to use this vase, let's say for like pencils or something that's not a plant, then go for the one millimeter. But if you do really want to plant something inside of it, I would recommend go the extra thickness and go up to two millimeters just to be on the safe side because we don't want your vase to actually leak or anything. So stick with two millimeters for real plants. Anything else, use a one millimeter. For me, I'm not gonna plant anything, so I'm gonna stick with the one millimeter. So I'm gonna click and hold and drag it to your preferred slicer of choice and give it a few seconds to load in. Once the model's finished loading in, you should see a beautiful vase. Now, we're gonna take this step by step. And first we're gonna select a layer quality or layer height. So over here in profile, click on this. And you can select whatever profile you want, whatever quality you want. I'm gonna stick with low quality, which is 0.28 millimeters but you can go finer than that. So if you want a higher quality, you want more crisp edges, I recommend going maybe to 0.2 millimeters. But for this uh, project, I'm gonna stick at 0 0.28. If you wanna see how it looks like at 0 0.28, just skip to the end of the video. You can see the showcase on how mine turned out. If this pops up, click on discard. Next, we're gonna to go to infill. We're gonna make sure that's at our standard 20%. If you have a different input, then leave it as it is. But you know, 20% or higher should be more than sufficient for this. Next, we're gonna go to supports. Now, there's quite a bit of red, as you can see, meaning we do need supports, but for this model, we're not gonna turn that on, or we're gonna leave that off. You should be able to print more than fine without supports for this model, so do not generate supports. And if you do, you're gonna have a, a very tough time trying to remove them, because they're gonna be basically lodged into these little spots. So almost impossible to remove, so do not print with supports. Next, build plate adhesion. If you look at the bottom of the model, we have a large surface area in direct contact with the build plate. So no build plate adhesion. And that's basically it. There's nothing else you have to do to the model. So once you're ready, click on this blue slice button and give it a few seconds to process. But once it's finished slicing, you should be given a time estimate of roughly 11 hours and 34 minutes, but that will depend on the printer you are using as well as the settings you used. You should also be given an estimated filament usage of roughly 64 grams. We always preview the print by clicking this button right here. And let's take a look around the model, see if anything weird or funky is going on. And everything looks pretty good and normal, so all you have to do now is save the file and send it over to your printer. Here's the model straight off the build plate. Everything looks pretty good, but there is a little bit of stringing that you're gonna have to deal with. There is a straight line going down on one side of the vase where there's a little few imperfections. So a little bit of bad retraction, a little bit of stringing and some bad overhang angles. You should be able to grab a pair of wire cutters or a little bit of sandpaper and clean those edges off so it doesn't affect the model too much. Here's the model once a little bit of post-processing was done. It stands at roughly 12 centimeters tall. 
there's really not any defects or imperfections other than at that single vertical line on one side of the vase. But that can definitely be cleaned up like I said. Plus you can't really tell unless you're really up close and personal with the vase. Overall the vase came out pretty well and I do enjoy it quite a bit. It is basically a work of art. I'm planning to use it to hold either pencils, pens, etc. But in the future I may even add a plant in there just to see how it'll turn out. Although this was a long print, I do recommend it to anybody who wants it. It is pretty beautiful and stunning and does have some utility to it.